YouTube, we're back for some more on the ASH-26. It's Brian Phillips here. Where we last left off, we had just mounted this electronic speed control by Yep. And we were trying to get these wires managed when the memory ran out. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be drilling a hole in the wood. That's going to allow us to tie up the cables right here and that will keep them in a nice tidy little grouping right there and that's going to also prevent them from getting into the side of the brushless motor bell housing so that's what I'm going to do next obviously going to be a little bit challenging to make a hole because how do you get a drill in there well very carefully I guess <clears throat> and I'm just trying to do this in a way that doesn't cause another problem Because I can't get in there with this, I have another idea that's going to work. And ultimately we're going to use this rather than a zip tie. There's just a twisty tie. So we can feed that through a pretty small hole. So here's my plan guys. It's time for some torch action. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to heat this thing up. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to force it through that wood right there. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it in such a way that I don't catch anything on fire other than that hole. Okay, so we're heating up the tip of this thing. This just so happens to be painted. That has nothing to do with the function of what we're doing. It's just whatever I grab first. This is like a mixing stick I use for mixing paint. I'm using the clean end. Probably wouldn't want to do it with a painted end. But as you can see, it's making it through. It's just making slow progress. Not as slow as putting a drill in there and chopping everything up. Let's get that thing till it's glowing hot. Yep. And we're through. Turn on the exhaust fan real quick here. Don't want to turn on the uh, smoke alarms right now. I might get kicked out of the house by my wife because the kids are sleeping. All right, so now that we have that hole, <clears throat> I can go ahead and feed. Let's verify that we have enough thickness to get this wire through first. Uh, looks like we're maybe just shy so we'll just go ahead and open up that hole a little bit more with the same same piece of steel <clears throat> it's very easy to control these holes when you're doing it that way it's something that came as a surprise to me when I started doing it And it's really nice to be able to <clears throat> get in there without a straight bit to be able to make that angle. It makes a huge difference. If you had the right bit in your Dremel tool, you could probably get away with doing it another couple of different ways, but I don't, so this is the option I'm going to be left with. Okay, so now we have enough room to fit that piece through. <clears throat> so that works surprisingly well. Okay, so I'm just realizing that this thing is kind of curled up pretty bad. So I'm just going to opt to use one that's a little bit straighter. <clears throat> and I'm incidentally going to cut off the portion that's a little wiggly at the end here just because I don't want to mess with it okay so this time I can just make a nice big sweep on it and I'll go around come down and through use the forceps to help me guide it in 
and now it's through. <coughs> Gosh, I can't, I can't even think of how many times I've used these forceps on this project. So I gotta block you for a second, guys. Actually, got a little bit more than I needed then. Through on that little batch. Okay, so this is where I'm not going to be a cheapskate. I'm just going to use up whatever I need. Okay, so now I'm just going to hold these in a nice little neat bundle, the wires that is. I'm going to just take and twist this. I'm going to take my flat. My flat pliers. I can take and twist this until such a time as we're satisfied with the tightness. Keeping in mind that I'm not so much concerned with having this especially tight as much as I am about keeping it controlled. I don't really care where the wires sit except that there's a motor in here that's going to be spinning at a high rate. And everything is nice and tidy there now. I'd give you a shot, but even if I had the helmet on, I don't think I could get the angle, so we'll definitely at some point get you a good shot of that. Now I need to throw a little bit of tape in there just as a precautionary measure, and what I'll do is I'll just fold this up over to the top, and that'll be accessible for later if we need to undo that. So we should be able to get in there fairly easy again. So we're just going to use this tape. This is a fiber reinforced tape. I got this stuff at Hobby King and I've been very happy with it. It's worked well. About the only thing that's a bummer with this product is that uh, it's so sticky. You got to be careful. If you're on the edge, you can actually pull the fiber out. So just be careful about that. So I'm going to use a piece about this big. And I'm basically just going to set it across the wires like we had before. The only difference of course being that this is really more as a precautionary thing. We've already got it held there so it won't have anywhere to go unless we get in an accident. If we get in an accident all bets are off, right? Because it's not like in a car where you get in an accident and you drive it home. You don't need to fly the airplane home when you crash. You're pretty much done. So That worked pretty nice. All right, so now, being that that works so well, it's tempting to say, let's do it again, except I don't know that we need to poke the hole this time, because we already have that hole there, and we can pull these taut and over to the edge just to control and manipulate those wires, all of them together. I just am a little bit nervous about the amount of pressure that we might need to apply in order to pull them over to the corner like that. But to be perfectly honest, I'm satisfied with I'm satisfied with the amount of pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get another one of these going. It's going to go through that that hole that we opened up earlier. So let's make this nice little sweep here. It's kind of hard to see, I'm sure, in the video. So this is going to contain and manage both the signal wire and of course the output lines that go to the motor um, <clears throat> I'd like these to be flipped around just one notch I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm doing there but all I'm trying to do is get these wires to lay out a certain way so that when they get compressed tight there's less pressure on the other side where the solder joint is on the actual electronic speed control that's really all I care about. That pressure there, because that could be a compromising, um, compromising issue there. Compromised motor power in a glider can still be pretty devastating. Because if you expect the power to be there, then you expect the power to be there. It's one thing if you know there's no power there. Okay, so there we go. Got that through. Of course, it came all at once, like usual. 
Okay, so now we're going to just clip off a reasonable length here. And guys, I realize on this video series, it's been like really, really long. Um, and I'm, I know that there's been a couple of steps that we've had to undo here. And for that, I regret. Um, believe me, I didn't want to have to redo it either. But the good news is, you're going to get to see this come to fruition. So that's one thing I hate more than watching a 30 minute video is watching a 30 minute video 17 times and then just having somebody just drop the video series. It's kind of like a TV show that was on once, and I forget what it was called, but it was like some zombie show. It was on the BBC, if I recall, and it had quite the following. And every episode was a cliffhanger, as would be all zombie shows. And then it just ended one year, and it was like, oh, well, so we don't... It was called Survivor. That's right. Not Survivor. Survivors. That's right. If you've seen Survivor and you're ticked off from 10 years ago when it ended, actually I didn't watch it live, I watched it on Netflix, I, I believe I binge watched the whole thing. It was really good, I thought. Not like Walking Dead good, but still good. Oh, by the way, if you're watching it, I'm multiple seasons behind, so don't tell me anything about it. Awesome, so that's going to help secure that wire further. And I am going to trim a little bit of excess on this one because it's just in a weird spot. And then I'm going to fold this over. Now, normally and many times I will have, I'll have you take the, the sheath off of these cables, but not in this case. You want to definitely protect your wires from themselves. Meaning, at times I'll have you guys take and strip this off so you've got the little wire left. You know, just for retention with the wire. Don't do that here. You don't want a dead short to ever happen. If these wires would heat up, you don't want to give it a channel uh, to transmit heat and potentially short out. That could cause a fire. That'd be dangerous. Although it'd be pretty cool to see. So if you're going to do it, put it on YouTube. All right. Secure, secure. Um, we have this lead here coming from the ESC now. And that needs to make its way probably over the top of this area and then back down and through. Or it needs to go right here. You know, and to be honest with you, it's not as pretty, but that's really the practical way to go. Um, because alternately, we would be under there coming up right where the battery is. Remember, the battery's got to slide into this, this void here. So, um, the other thing is we do have this wire there. So I could take the excess. I mean, maybe maybe I just leave leave my loop and just follow along with this. Goes to the the rudder servo right here. And so since it comes out there, it's got to loop back down somehow. And then really the ailerons, we don't need to worry about those just quite yet. Um, but I'm gonna ultimately probably have a jumper going down. Let's get that done too. So the jumpers are gonna consist of. I got a bag of goodies here, so we'll just zoom out a little bit. One of my mini bags. So I've got a short male to female extension here. You'll see they're all orange. And so that might not be what I want to use because what I would like to use will actually consist of both red, white, and black extension cords and the orange yellow and brown which would be like the turnigy style if I recall and then the uh, white black and red of course is going to be your uh, Futaba style see I've got both styles there but these are uh, these are long so I don't want to do that <clears throat> these are good they're just all the same color ooh look at that there we got some short extension cords that are that color let's see if we've got See, because we don't need to go very far with this. Ooh, look at that. Nope, that's a Y cable. So you get the idea. I'm just basically going to go through my stock and find 
what I need. Um, looks like these are Y cables as well. Okay, so <clears throat> basically I don't have the two different color schemes in the correct length. I had some short ones in the white, red, and black. But uh, essentially that's not going to work then. So what I'm left with is a decision to um, do this one of two ways. Uh, one way is pretty straightforward. And that would entail when I assemble the wing section, I slide this through. And then basically I, I have to secure this somehow so that I can get it plugged in and then it won't interfere with the landing gear or with the uh, rudder linkage here. And so I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that still. But maybe for the maiden flight, I'll just take and uh, tie these together, you know, like this. Or something to that extent. Because as long as I've got them controlled, we're okay. So for now, those things are just going to be out of the way. Until such a time as I can give them my full attention. Because these two extension cords are probably what I'm going to end up using. And they're going to plug in to the appropriate channels, and then they'll be labeled as such, and I'll have quick, easy access to the plugs without having to bury them into the receiver. And alternately, I'll just build both a male and a female end on this, because as you can see, it's plenty long to reach into the receiver, and then I just simply cut it somewhere back here where it's accessible. But you do need slack to do this sort of thing. So I don't want to push my luck. So for now, I guess I'm going to push that back to the next step. Okay, so just sitting here thinking about this power input from the battery. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I just need to tuck this underneath where my other secured wires are. Um, I don't want that to be capable of getting up into the motor, which I don't think it's going to be once we're up and running. I think I need to do that in the front, actually. if it'll go through. Not 100% sure how I want to do that yet, but for now, I could even tie that in with the other ones. Just like right there, guys. But now we need to do an interim test here. We gotta make sure our battery's still fitting, because obviously that's kind of what we've been fighting through lately. So if we lift these wires up, because ultimately they're gonna be out of the way at some point, you see the problem I'm running into now is now that I have that ESC in there, despite being able to get this slip in, I bet, I kind of need that wood to just get out of the way. You see that wood there? I'm just rubbing into it hard. I need it out of the way. Um, I'd hope to not have to do that, but... Um, I don't think it really matters anyway. We don't need that. So I'm going to grab the tool and cut it out. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to just kind of get our approximate cut area figured out, which is going to consist of along this strip, and then right here we'll go along this path and just take it back to where there's already that natural break point. And then right here we'll just We'll just go straight back, and then we'll make a nice bend. Um, I wish I could do this with my power tools, but I just don't see that happening. So we'll just come at it with a couple of different cuts until it starts getting weak. And I want to try one other thing too, which is going to be a hot blade. That works so good for us on the the hole that I want to try to get on this. I'm heating up a, one of my older X-Acto knives. We'll see how this goes. I gotta turn on the exhaust. For reasons I already mentioned earlier. I'm gonna straighten that blade real quick just so I have a little bit of a bend to it. And so I'm just heating this up till it's about red hot, glowing orange, red. 
And this stuff cuts surprisingly very good. The hotter you get the knife, the better it cuts, which is weird. Now the rationale behind doing this with a hot blade versus what we've been doing, see what happened there? I got into a harder spot and it was actually harder than the knife blade. Um, the rationale behind doing this is that you can use a lot less pressure and so you're less likely to slip in your cut and cascade into the side of the, the fuselage, which is what I'm very concerned about doing right now and the wires and stuff that are all around. Now on paper this plane is really close to being done but that's what I thought when we started this whole process this evening. And what are we into? This is like our fifth video tonight. on my exhaust system here. So, it's getting a little bit smoky in here, so I'm just going to switch to this. It's not bothering me, I just don't want to set off the alarms because it's late. We'll just come back to that here in a minute if we have to. I'm really close to making it through now, so I think we'll be okay. So just go ahead and break it. I'm just going to give it a little test. Okay, so we got that out now. Lay that aside, now we can clean up the edges a little bit. Could have gone a lot worse, I suppose. Boy, there's one thing I'm not crazy about with that method for cutting with hot is that you come back later and you're going to think something was caught on fire in there because you're going to see the burn mark and you might even smell the smoke. So. This edge isn't quite as clean as clean as I'd like. Okay, so now let's give it a little back. Okay, so now that we've got that cut and out of the way, see all these wires are going over to that side. Or there's nothing magical about that side except that we've got this servo low now, and then this servo is high, and yet for some reason I decided to try to put the electronic speed control over here. Well, I'll explain that because I had the motor leads over here. 
If I would have tried to go over here, I would have never reached. So let's see how this goes. It's definitely in there. I need these wires to be out of the way so that I can feed this in appropriately. I think the easiest way is what I, could, I was thinking earlier. Let's try to tuck this up under here. Then I might need to tie that up depending on how things line up for using it. Even if it's just set down like that when it's not being used, that doesn't hurt my feelings. It always looks like there's dust and debris down there, but it's not debris, it's just the color of the, the finish on the fiberglass. Okay, so you see I'm hitting the edge of this servo here because it hangs low, whereas this one doesn't. And so that's the challenge I'm facing right now is that as I attempt to slide the battery in, I'm binding up along the, the edge of the uh, SC, which keep in mind is going to potentially get pretty warm. So I'm not real thrilled about that, but... And I'm also having to really work to feed that in now, the battery, which is more than a little bit frustrating. So if I slide it in at an angle, just like this, I can get it to go, but I don't like having to force batteries to slide into things like that because it's not a real good practice. The one thing I do like about it is that we have a nice positive seat. I mean, it's in there tight right now, tight-ish, to the extent that if it were to go forward, it can't go forward into the, um, into the motor, which is real nice. So just out of curiosity, let's uh, get it fired up. Okay, so how hard is this going to be to plug in as it stands? Oh, my electronic speed control is not even plugged in to the receiver. It's right here. Okay, so, all right, we got to deal with that before we can do that next test. The reason I was doing that next test was just to see if everything was still going to be free and clear. Um, okay, one other thing we were going to do earlier, and we... We got sidetracked by a million other things. Is we were going to try to take that down so that this can't hit when it swings. And uh, hypothetically, that shouldn't be super hard, but I don't know. Everything else seems to be harder than it should be. So maybe this will be just as hard as those things. So, what I want to do is I want to remove this material here so it's gone. And then over here, we want to try to maybe just squeak a little bit of that CA off of there. try to cut this, but I have a suspicion it's going to be tricky to do that. Now I don't have to remove all the layers of this material, but I need to remove some of them. And I think we got to go hot blade on this one again, because otherwise I'm not going to have enough control to remove it. Um, so let's try it again and see if we get lucky. Okay, so we've got the hot blade here. Just making a nice groove there. Okay, another hot blade. Just trying to do a plunge cut here. Uh, it didn't cut very good that time, but it, it definitely gave me something to work with.
Guys, we're getting really close to running out of memory again. I know that doesn't surprise anybody at this point. But um, I'm going to try to get this cut in, and we'll see. We'll see if we get it. And it looks like we got this part, guys. Finally. So that's basically going to allow us to drop down that receiver a little bit deeper, which is what we needed. And that's going to basically be the end of it for this video. We'll come back with the next one. Keep watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.